Our next panelist is um, Feng Chung Miao. Uh, he's a chief of units for ICT, ICT being Information and uh, Communication Technology, in education at UNESCO. Uh, he's, he leads the UNESCO education sector's programs in the area of ICT in education policy planning and development, digital and AI skills development for teachers and students, open educational resources, mobile learning, AI and education, and future e-schools. He's also in charge of the UNESCO Prize for the use of ICTs in education. He coordinates a a cooperation with other UN agencies in the field of ICT for UN's Sustainable Development Goals, and we discussed that this morning. Before joining UNESCO, Dr. Miao was the Director General of the National Research Center for Computer Education at the Ministry of Education in China. In that capacity, he was responsible for the development of ICT in education policy and ICT curriculum standards for students and for managing the National Association for the Use of ICT in K-12 schools of China. There's no one better than you, Dr. Miao, to discuss AI and education. And again, uh, we're blessed to have one of the UNESCO's uh, policymakers in the field. So please, thank you very much. Good afternoon again, and uh, after the excellent presentation, I want to to bring uh, all of us back to the education, uh, which is area many people may believe that uh, artificial intelligence has not been used so much. So, but I want to review what are the real use cases, and maybe we discuss some legal issues relating to this. Next slide. I and then uh, please show the slides. Yes. And I want to uh, structure my talk on the use of artificial intelligence in education under the framework of uh, sustainable development uh, uh, goals number four, which is about education 2030. But uh, <coughs> UNESCO is moving beyond 2030 to think of the future of education even at uh, 2050. So the overall vision of the SDG4 Education 2030 uh, is uh, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning for all. Under this one, we set up some um, uh, s some of the uh, targets. Those are the targets in the frame. You will find the targets in the school system, and uh, outside the the frame, you will find some targets on the right hand about uh, the out of school targets. Even we call it further education targets. And uh, on the left hand, there are three enabling factors to achieve this SDG for Education 2030. So our thinking from UNESCO uh, about the use of AI in education is to really to use AI to address the fundamental challenge, not the superficial uh, activities. Uh, we think the fundamental challenge are the inclusion, equity, gender equality, and of course the quality of learning. Um, but also we need to think of the relevance of our learning to the job market, to the industry, to the industry for zero, and how we can recognize the learning outcome and also uh, transfer the learning outcome from school, from pr primary to secondary, to higher education and to the job market. So that's how we think uh, 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 where we should use AI in education. And then we try to raise three fundamental uh, questions, or we can call them three very fundamental business scenarios uh, of the interaction between AI and education. First of all, uh, relating very much relating to the topic of this conference, how we could ensure ethical, inclusive, and equitable use of AI in education. The second one is very fundamental, is that we are entering an era we call AI era. How education can prepare all of us uh, as particularly the youth and next generation, not only to work with AI, but also to live with AI, but more particularly to work with AI, what kind of skill we need. And then the last one is that when we are teaching, we are managing the education, how we could uh, leverage the potential of AI. For this purpose, I list the three layers of thinking. First of all, what are the digital world, which are the algorithm, data, and the computing power? And then what are the interface? What kind of device we are using in our hand, mobile phones, and the other kind of devices and application. The, and then what kind of use cases, activities, practice we want to support, uh, we, including education management, uh, provision of education, teaching and learning, and including learning assessment. And there's a th different uh, uh, historical stage. Uh, we have the current AI, the near future AI, maybe the far future AI, we, we call them strong AI or true AI. Now, actually, it's only the weak AI around Earth. And then we need to think of the downside of the use of AI 
in society, in education, in teaching and learning, especially for our children. So uh, under this one, I list uh, these uh, eight uh, categories of the use of AI in education. And we try from UNESCO to collect uh, different uh, emerging uh, use cases uh, in, uh, in different uh, scenarios. Uh, I will show you some example. Uh, this is how we, we look at AI. In the, in the core AI is the, the, the data algorithm and the computing. And the our side, we have different uh, AI technology, for example, speech recognition, image recognition. And then surround them are the use cases. Uh, we collect some, uh, some real cases. Most of them are from uh, UK, US, uh, China, India, not so much from uh, France. Uh, excuse me, I hope we can find more examples from France in the near future, especially based on our uh, Willani, Cedric Willani's push. And uh, first one, for example, for the people with uh, some uh, disability, with, uh, with uh, deaf people, blind people, there are some, some kind of technology to help them to learn uh, the object. Uh, this, this is object recognition for the deaf uh, children. We have the URL. And then uh, now we are working with the Norwegian aid, fund, uh, aid agency, uh, Nora, to push this uh, global digital library. And in this digital library, we are making the publication available in local language. For example, in 50 East Opia language, in, in the Pony language, in Thai language. And then at the same time, we are using AI. You can ask AI to help you to read the book. Uh, not the, the parents to read a book. If you have some problem with the eyes, you can ask AI to read a book. And then uh, for, for EMS, how to use AI for education management information system. There are some examples. For example, in the Open University of uh, UK, they are using this uh, OU analysis to use big data to predict the learning outcome. And then in some of the EMIS system, they are using technology to help them to collect the data. For example, people were talking about using the rooms to map a school, to map students and uh, teachers in the schools. And at the same time, you can also use algorithm to read the data from different social media, from Facebook, from Twitter, about the education data, and to empower the EMIS system. And then when we come to the AI for learning, many people are talking about to use AI to recognize the learning pattern. We are talking about to use AI for the disease person, uh, pattern. Now we are also using AI for the learning pattern. And uh, there's a lot of uh, algorithm, uh, at least the two of them, uh, ELO and uh, the other ones, uh, BSL knowledge uh, tracing algorithm. Uh, but uh, I want to see that we are only recognize the learning pattern. It doesn't mean that we personalized learning will improve the quality. The personalized learning doesn't equal to the quality learning. We need to think deeper about how to use AI to improve qu quality of learning. And then there's some, uh, a lot of personalized learning system. For example, in India, they are using this system. And uh, number four is AI for different subjects. We are teaching math, language, uh, music, and uh, art. So how can we use them? Very largely used is the AI for language learning, for learn English, for mother tongue. So we have a lot of applications to use the machine translation uh, to help the kids to learn language. And also we have some uh, AI tools for the AI for, for math mathematics learning and also for music. So later on we'll have the, uh, another speech about this. I will skip it. And then even for to, to help the children to to uh, with their re writing, you know how you can ask robotics to help to in the improve your quality of reading. So the picture didn't show up. And then also this one is uh, task oriented reading. You know there's some uh, innovative pedagogies to use the AI in education. So this is from Netherlands. And then uh, we also have AI for the development of critical thinking, creativity, especially we call it uh, 21st century skill. This one was from UAE. And then for teachers, we, we from UNESCO, we are not talking about the use of AI to replace teacher. We think we should use AI to empower teacher. So for this purpose, we find that, for example, this example, smart glass. You know, if the teacher wear glass, you can see how the students are performing, and uh, to facilitate the teacher to monitor the students and to improve the learning process. And this one, <coughs> you, you mean we can have uh, uh, action move, movement recognition technology to train teacher how to do better to do a presentation. I'm not a good uh, uh, presenter, but how I can be trained, so we can use AI. 
And then uh, more and more people are talking about human machine dual teacher model, which means you have a human teacher, you have a AI teacher, how they can work together. So we have an example from uh, one company called Tao from China. It's very, uh, so for example, in this, uh, uh, we, in this uh, image, you can find that the teacher is a virtual teacher based on the real teacher. The AI recognize the movement pattern and then to simulate a teacher. F after this, you can just give the content to this teacher. This virtual teacher will, re will teach automatically. You don't need to record the video. So this kind of, uh, it's already happening in China for many years even. And then uh, to recognize and uh, record the learning outcome, uh, we also are using blockchain AI to how, how to, to help us to transfer the learning outcome. One of the best examples from Singapore called OpenCert. The third meaning certificate. So you can search the website, very interesting application. Uh, and uh, also, we have the lifelong learning uh, assistant to help us to manage lifelong learning. Uh, I want to talk about some uh, uh, ethical issues relating to the use of AI education to echo the topic of this uh, conference. I summarize four typical topics, uh, particularly in the field of education. First one, I call it the deeper violation of data privacy. We all know that. You know, actually, <clears throat> for your surprise, you know, the big technology company have 70%, 80% of our case data. We, we, we have a phenomenon called uh, not the parenting, but the sharing. When the parents show your kids the photo on Twitter, on Facebook, the big company are collecting the data from your kids. So when you post the, the photos in your uh, private uh, account, be careful. We call it share renting. And then, uh, more seriously in China, because China is a leading uh, country in use AI in education, many, many problems is already not hidden problem. It's already emerged. This year, there's two cases, legal cases, law cases happened. Real happened is that, First of all, recently in China, many classrooms are installed the image recognition AI camera. You can see the camera in front of the classroom here to recognize everybody. And you can see the, the monitoring, the data. The school principal, the teacher sitting in the office, mm, this guy is not uh, studying. He, he is uh, sleeping, he is uh, young. And then later on, they call the student to the, uh, the approach principal office. That's one thing. Second one, you, can, you see this case, they're wearing a ring. This rings AI ring to, to trace your brain wave, whether you are concentrated on reading, concentrated on study or not. If not, it will stimulate you. And uh, now uh, China found that it's a big problem. Now the ministry already uh, curbed this use. So you can see the result. You know, it's the real case. In France, in Europe, in UK, it, it might still be the hidden case. But this kind of case is still a kind of uncharted uh, legal issue. I think this is really, really very important real uh, landscape we need to think of. And of course, we all know the deep fix. For our concern from UNESCO is that how this deep fix will influence our case. How they will, they will discover and learn this world. You know, it might be have an uncertainty of the future and also a threat, not threat to the election and the, the society, but uh, sometimes we can generate some uh, deep hatred among our next generation. So that's the things we are worrying. And the third one is, uh, we already mentioned, it's a data bias against the females and the vulnerable group. Uh, if you search a doctor in Google, most of the image are, are male and not female. And uh, you can see the employee in the technology company Majority of them are still male. And behind them, even in Amazon, we know that Amazon uses algorithm to recruit uh, their staff. Uh, the algorithm has some bias to the female. If you're female, boom, let's go, we are low. And uh, they already uh, modified, uh, rectify that, but it happened. And the last one is, uh, it's really a dilemma, you know, as we understand from the medical area. We shouldn't make the data available for machine learning. But at the same time, we have the data progress. It's a dilemma, how to keep the balance. So for, for your information, you know, a, a, the, the really the social media is collecting our private data. If you search Google, you could find that. The social media know even our sex habits. To surprise you, to shock you, you can search Google. But anyway, I want to move to UNESCO. What we are doing quickly, just one minute, uh, two minutes. First of all, we are uh, helping the member states to develop an AI-ready policymaker to how to make the policymaker, especially in education, ready for 
to embrace uh, uh, AI world. We are developing an AI education policy uh, guideline, develop tools to, ma to map the AI education readiness. Uh, this is the first uh, perspective. Secondly, we are helping the member states, uh, we call member states, countries to develop AI skills, especially to think how to integrate coding AIs in K-12, in TVET. So we are thinking of this kind of activity. Third one, we are promoting that the youth should uh, come out to have more challenge-based AI development and innovation. And uh, of course, the last one is the principle. So just for information, we have a definition about uh, what do we mean by a humanistic approach towards the use of uh, AI. I think uh, uh, Moise of ADG this morning already introduced. I will skip this slide. And uh, we have a prize from UNESCO. I'm managing this prize. The topic of this year is to the use of AI to innovate, innovate education, teaching, and learning. We already passed the deadline, but you're welcome to come back next year to apply for this prize. And then we organized a big conference in Beijing in China in, in this year, in May. It's already happened. Uh, this is really the first international conference in this field. We have more than 120 countries come, and then we have um, uh, 50 ministers. We passed the Beijing consensus on the AI and the education. You can download it. We have six languages, English, French uh, included, even Spanish, uh, Russian, Arabic, and Chinese. And uh, so we are developing an AI in education policy guideline, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, we also develop a kind of uh, uh, AI skills framework, you know, to, to use iceberg to analyze what's the different layers of AI skills needed by different group of people. And then we are developing this uh, assessment tool on AI in education readiness. So far, there's no AI in education assessment tool, but the general AI readiness tool, there are many. So we have uh, already done a desk review. We are moving forward to develop these tools. So the last one is that, you know, everybody is talking about the human machine intelligence. So that's my uh, deep thinking is that there's a different stage of uh, human machine uh, collaborative intelligence. The first one is really human machine competitive intelligence. We all know that the Google Go, Google Zero to beat the, the chess champion is a competition. Try to compete to replace human. The second level is really complement how we can use AI to complement the human intelligence. Uh, and then the, the third is really to how to infuse the human machine, human and machines intelligence. And I hope in the future we should have human machine inspiring intelligence in the, the, the you know the, intelli the AI is not only to help us to do something but to really inspire human to become smarter and smarter instead of you know we ask the AI to do everything we become lazier and lazier we become uh, uh, more and more stupid so <coughs> with this we I want to uh, <coughs> alert that the next year we are organizing the next mobile learning week uh, under the theme of artificial intelligence and inclusion here in Paris in UNESCO from 2 to 6 March of 2020. So here's my email. If you have any question or you want to have some discussion or debate, please write to me. Thank you very much. Thank you.